vision in the not too distant future next sunday ad there was a show where i list things and my name begins with d was that a self rhyme d and ad i don't know i might be cheating welcome to the d list Mystery Science Theater 3000, the funniest television show of all time. And between an upcoming brand new season on Netflix, a wide net of alumni doing wonderful riffing projects of their own, and a recent reunion special where we got to hear them all riff together, there has never been a more exciting time to be a fan of the show that perfected movie riffing. So I thought I'd celebrate by looking at the show's second most popular aspect. Here are my top 12 favorite songs from MST3K. Number 12. Making up lyrics to the score of the film was a common pastime for the riffers, and once in a while these lyrics would get expanded into their own songs. The most notable instance probably comes from the Fugitive Alien series of films, which provided a memorable piece of score that Joel and the bots turned into a memorable refrain. And then they turned that memorable refrain into a memorable medley. This is the song starting off our medley, our favorite Fugitive Alien song. Don't try to kill us with the forklift, it won't take very long, relax and sing along. Okay, so the forklift part is the most memorable part, but I think it alone is enough for this song to warrant inclusion on the list. I mean, no Misty has ever looked at a forklift the same way again since these episodes. Still, the rest of the medley is pretty great. Some parts become memorable through sheer repetition. I love Ken, he is my sweet friend, and I love him. And as a bonus, the medley includes a second song about their hatred of a certain producer of localizations. We want to stick it to Sandy Frank And sit on his chest and gob on his face And make him cry Number 11. With a pickle mind, we kick the nipple beer as steady as a goat. We're flying over trout. Sometimes the movie doesn't give the riffers much to latch onto, and the host segments end up being off topic. Other times, the movie gives the riffers so much to latch onto that they can basically just reenact scenes from the film in the host segments, and it ends up being hilarious. Two of Pod People's host segments are basically just sweeting scenes from the movie with only minor embellishment. Mini on the road now. Mini in control. Wheels on fire. Burning rubber tires. Which brings us to Idiot Control Now, a Mondegreen-laden cover of a song from Pod People, performed by Joel and the Bots, that is just so damn catchy. Honestly, I don't have anything to say about this song that they didn't say themselves. Pretty good. What do you think? It stinks. Number 10. All right. Yeah. Ow. Ow, ow, boogie. Ow. Back in the funky 70s. After sitting through a piece of a re-edited Gemini Man episode, which is a subject I might know something about, Servo announces his song about the 70s. Ow, ow, back in the super bad 70s. The Roman Empire still reigns supreme. And yeah, the joke here is obvious, and the punchline to the scene is even more obvious, but it's still effective, and it really showcases their ability to capture any musical style they choose. Do you remember the 50s when Emperor Claudius died? The yeah. Apostle Paul? Uh, Number nine. I was alone with the world to tame. I was evil but feeling blue. So I'm a sucker for cheesy theme songs, and this ditty with lyrics like a sitcom theme and a presentation like a variety show theme is. Well, it's just perfect. Friar, I had a void in the shape of you. Oh, Looking for love, hoping for evil, all I got was chicken cordon blue. I would put this song against any theme song written by Alan Thicke. 
wonder if I can hire the Mads to write a theme for my life. Ruling the world with our heads in a swirl and it's key. Living in deep third. Number eight. Oh, I wish I was back in old Canada, a land which I never shall lampoon. Roused Hour's adventures drudge up some Canadian resentment in Mike and Crow, so Servo comes to the Great White North's defense. Until Mike and Crow hijack it. Oh, I wish I was stuck in the hills of Alberta, drinking beer with some big dumb guy trapping fur. As he scraped and he chiseled all the moose dung off his boots, I would learn that he's the prime minister. Oh, stop that! A fine entry into the pantheon of satirical faux anti-Canada songs, this song doubles as a mockery of Canadian stereotypes and a mockery of mockeries of Canadian stereotypes as Servo's lack of nuance strips any cleverness away, revealing the ugly viciousness underneath. Just where the hell does Canada get off sharing a border with countries far superior to it? Yikes. Why, you lousy, stinking, francophonic, bacon-loving bastards, your country's just a giant piece of... Number seven. Lyle Wagner's a total jerk. Second only to Tommy Kirk. A Catalina caper has given Servo a bit of a crush. A crush he seems more confused by than anybody. That fishy story you tell always makes me sleepy. But that's just what I get for dating a girl that's creepy, my. And the only way to express a crush like that is with doo wop. And a. Surprising inability to spell. R is for the gifts you give me every time you smile. The first E is for, uh, well, I don't really know, but the second E is really a grammatical thing, because otherwise it would be creppy girl, and where would that leave us? This song came early enough in the show's run that not everybody had yet taken for granted just how amazing Kevin Murphy's singing voice is. Suck on that, guy who hates Tom Servo's new voice. Who won't you be my hime? I'll give you scrolls and fish and tinker toys and wine. I'll ditch these guys if you'll be my creepy girl. Number six. Outlaw of Gore is a sci-fi fantasy with elements of sword and sandal, so naturally it contains a lot of skin. And Mike and the Bots pay homage to this fact with a supercalifragilisticexpialidociously catchy tune. It's breastica, boobical, chestica, mammical, pendular, globular, fun. I think it's a fair assumption that most Misties get this song stuck in their head when they encounter gratuitous nudity. Is it gluteal maximum, tushital cracula, bunula morning till night? But I think the thing that makes this song work for me is just how much fun they're having with it. How joyous they are, not necessarily about the nudity itself, but just about the celebration. Even Gypsy gets in on it. So for me, this song isn't just a statement about the movie itself, but rather a tribute to how happy they are when they find something to celebrate in these terrible movies they're watching. And they don't always find something to celebrate, so they're grateful when they do. Number five. Once again, we return to Pod People for the big faux emotional closer. Tell me where does all the magic go? When the curtain falls to end the show, do the clowns always cry when they pack up? The paper sky. Joel bids farewell for the episode with a mantra that doesn't make much sense, but he's very passionate about it. The lock is on the old stage door. Will there still be a clown in the sky for me? <laughs> And despite there not being an iota of seriousness behind the emotion, it still kind of works. It works so well that the soundtrack albums for the series were named after this song. Tell me where is that clown in the sky for me? Oh. <laughs> I love you, Tom Servo. I love you, Joel. <laughs> I love you, Crow. You're not my real father. What do you think, sirs? It stinks. Number four. 
he's a werewolf, but he's my guy. He's different from the rest, I don't know why. Written by Mary Jo Peel, this fantastic pastiche of girl groups from the past covers that old standard trope, the dead boyfriend. In this case, the dead boyfriend just happens to be a werewolf. Where, oh, werewolf, I've lived everywhere. That's not even really the reason he died, other than slippery paws. To make our point, it wasn't that far. Take the Hiawatha exit left at the first stop sign. Oh, whose story is this, Carol? So the bots ended up in drag quite a lot. And I gotta say, they really pulled it off. I held his paw and I touched his cold nose. That means he's healthy. Werewolf is already one of the best episodes from the run of the show, and between this song and the Tusk closing credits bit, it's also one of the most musical. Susie, where, oh, werewolf, I've looked everywhere. Number three, there's this subgroup of Misties who claim that Pearl Forrester wasn't a good character and that the host segments in the Sci-Fi Channel years were somehow inferior. I think this song serves as proof that those people are factually incorrect. When loving lovers love, they loving love on wings of gold and loving love with... Everything about this song is flawless, from the inane repetitive lyrics to the absolutely earnest performance by Mary Jo Peel. The, the straight look at the camera kills me every time. Love is all we seem to need when we're in loving love. And then Brain Guy comes in and just sends it right over the top. Your heart has wings to fly. And no one else can fly. I really can't say why. I really do like pie. I know a couple guys. I they really do like pie. And, and loving lovers love as loving lovers love. Number two. Open up your heart and let the Patrick Swayze Christmas in. We'll gather at the Roadhouse. Penned by Michael J. Nelson, who just might have a bit of an obsession with Roadhouse, this tender carol is a loving tribute to the Swayzeest of holidays, and if you've made it this far into the video, this song's probably already a seasonal standard in your house, so... You already know how great it is. Let's have a Patrick Swayze Christmas this year. Or we'll tear your throat out and kick oh, you oh. in the ear. Hold it, hold it a yeah. can, but stop it. And my number one favorite MST3K song, What's Better Than One Kevin Murphy Singing? How about a whole chorus of them? I gotta stop wearing spoilers. Here's to the guys and gals who like to fly. Flying so high with some guy in the sky. sky. More or less a medley of song lyrics that have something to do with flight. What sells this is how seriously the multiple servos take the song and how beautiful they make it sound. Wouldn't you like to fly in my beautiful balloon? Take these broken wings and learn to fly me to the moon. And between the gorgeous harmonies and the elaborate puppeteering, I can't even begin to imagine what went into the song behind the scenes. But I did recently talk to somebody who would know. Putting the vocal tracks together was was easy. I, I can harmonize with myself pretty easily, so that wasn't too hard. Um, but making poor Jeff Maynard and Pat Brancic and uh, and Bees, I think, making the prop department put together all those servos so that they would perform in sync was a phenomenal task. And, uh, and uh, they did a fantastic job of that. I mean, first of all, getting, what was it, eight servos all together on stage at once to synchronize with their heads and their little beaks was 
a phenomenal task, and they, they, they pulled it off. It was fantastic. And those are my very favorites, but I haven't even begun to scratch the surface of great MST3K songs. And the new season will likely have even more, with potential guest stars like Jack Black and Neil Patrick Harris, and potential guest writers like comedy musicians extraordinaire Paul and Storm, and youngest EGOT winner and parental earworm initiator Bobby Lopez, there is a lot of comedy music talent being poured into the new season. And that's like fifth on the list of reasons I'm excited for it, so... I will definitely be lingering around Netflix for a while once that launches. And until next time, this is Dave, signing off.